The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to use the Water Surface Profile Excel spreadsheet that's provided on the Moodle website for BBE 3012. Uh, this uh, is to be used or applied to the open channel flow data from the uh, laboratory um, experiment done in lab six. The idea here is that you'll be able to calculate the water surface profile and compare that water surface profile to the measured water surface profile conducted for the laboratory. All right, so this uh, spreadsheet happens to be, to be for the case of subcritical flow. And I'll make a comment about subcritical versus supercritical flow uh, a bit later in the video. The spreadsheet is organized with these columns where the variables x2 and x1 refer to the uh, positions of a point that uh, velocity and depth and other hydraulic variables are calculated. What we do is uh, this is... Uh, procedure where we step between two points, point two and point one, or point one and point two along the open channel. Point one is located upstream of uh, point two. And we are going to start off from a known position, or a position of known water depth, and <clears throat> calculate upstream the water surface depth, or the water depth and water surface profile. So let's look at these variables. X2 is the position. Y2 would be the depth. A would be the cross-sectional area. P would be the wetted perimeter. R would be the hydraulic radius. V would be the velocity. Bell head would be the velocity head. And SF would be the friction slope. And uh, the 2 here would refer to position 2, and the 1s here would refer to position 1. The uh, calculator determines the average friction slope using the value at point 0.1 and at point 0.2. It then calculates the distance between point 0.1 and point 0.2 using the equation presented in class, uh, just using those variables that have been calculated, such as the velocity head between the two points, the depth between the two points, and the uh, friction slope, average friction slope, and the uh, channel slope. Position X2 is uh, negative because we are starting at zero and moving upstream to the left on the uh, graph that you see below. Um, <clears throat> in here, HL1-2 is the head loss between point 0.1 and point 0.2. That's the friction head loss. On the right-hand side, we've got a number of uh, parameters that are uh, put into the problem. First one is the actual discharge in the channel. Second is the channel slope, longitudinal slope of the channel. Uh, the third is the Manning's N. Uh, B is the bottom width of the channel. And uh, YN would be the normal depth. Y0 would be a starting depth at point um, zero, at location zero. DY is a change in water depth that we use to calculate the distance between points. YC is a critical depth. AN would be the cross-sectional area for normal depth. PN would be the wetted perimeter for normal depth. And RN would be the hydraulic radius for normal depth. And FR would be the friction, uh, would be the food number. And here, this uh, if statement determines whether or not it's uh, supercritical or subcritical based on what the food number is. If it's greater than 1, it'll be supercritical. If it's less than 1, it's subcritical. So one of the things that needs to be done, we can enter in here the discharge, slope of the channel, the Manning's end, the bottom width, or the width of the channel, because it is a rectangular channel. Um, and uh, we can once we enter those numbers in, the program automatically calculates the critical depth associated with uh, the discharge and the cross-sectional properties of the of the channel automatically does that calculation. But we have to iteratively determine the normal depth, and uh, we can do that. Of course, that's determined. The normal depth is determined from uh, Manning's 
uh, equation, given the Manning's coefficient and the slope of the channel and the cross-sectional properties of the channel, we can solve for the normal depth. It's an implicit calculation because uh, you can't explicitly write normal depth um, in Manning's equation and solve for it. So Manning's equation is split into two parts, and it's down here. One part is the discharge times the uh, Manning's n divided by the product of the bottom width of the channel raised to the 1.666 power times s raised to the 0.5 power. Okay, all those parameters in that expression are known, so immediately after you enter in the discharge, the Manning's n, b, and the channel slope, you get this value equal, in this case, equal to 0.5. The other uh, part of Manning's equation, when you separate it out into its parts, would be the geometry of the, of, uh, the channel in terms of uh, the normal depth. So this uh, quantity here um, in this cell uh, description is the uh, area times the hydraulic radius raised to the two-thirds power. And you can see that the normal depth appears in a couple places within the expression. So that's why we're not able to determine normal depth explicitly, uh, just knowing the discharge. So what we try to do here is, uh, for once the discharge and other parameters are put in, uh, you'll get this value equal to, in this case, 0.5. And the normal depth would be just uh, based on our guess as to what the normal depth, we get a number here. And what we need to do is to match these two. Well, these two pretty much match for the set of parameters we've got uh, entered in right now. But what I want to do is to set this up for the case of the open channel flow in the lab. And for that case, the discharge, uh, I'm using uh, the 130 gallons per minute, is approximately equal to 0.0082. So whatever your discharge is that uh, the channel, uh, the pump was set at, you'd put in that discharge. The slope is about uh, 0 0.00392. That is uh, two inches over, two inch drop over 42 feet. The main exam is a very smooth uh, surface inside the channel. So I'm going to guess it to be around 0 0.01. Um, smooth steel uh, pipe material would be about 0.012. I'm not sure if this is even smoother than that. This is a parameter, this Manning's N is a parameter that you'd be able to play around a little bit with to be able to match your measured uh, water surface profile with the calculated water surface profile. The width of the channel is about three feet. You have the exact measurement of that. I'm gonna call it uh, one meter just to be close um, as a guess. Right now, I don't have the data with me to tell me what the actual width is. And uh, so for those parameters, the uh, critical depth is 0 0.019 meters, so very shallow uh, value for the critical depth. And we don't know what the normal depth is right now. But you'll note with those parameters put in there, this down here for Manning's equation gives a value of 0 0.00131. And... Um, we, uh, the other, the geometry part of the equation is very large, it's about 0.5, because that's what's left over from the previous calculation. So if I change the normal depth, what I'm going to have to do is reduce it to try to get these two numbers to match each other. I'm going to put in uh, a very small number, one of um, one five, something less than the critical depth, actually. And you can see that this drops down closer to um, in closer in agreement with uh, this parameter here, or this number that was calculated before. I'll make this a little bit larger, and actually should be pretty close to the critical depth. So we're approaching it. Um, critical depth is calculated 0.019. 0.018 for the normal depth gets us very close.
Okay, so that's that's about as close as I'm going to get. Point um, zero zero one three one. Uh, this has got a few more digits to it, so uh, it looks like we're pretty close uh, as far as uh, getting agreement. So the normal depth is uh, very close to the critical depth, and it's slightly less, indicating that the food number is very close to one. So uh, the flow should be super critical flow. Um, this was actually observed in the laboratory where the depth was, uh, was fairly shallow at the upstream end of the channel, and there seemed to be a small hydraulic jump. This hydraulic jump would be very weak because the food number is very small uh, upstream of where the jump occurs. And the jump is occurring because of the uh, backup of water by the H flume in the uh, laboratory flume. Um, the actual depth of water at the H flume is determined based on the performance characteristics or hydraulic characteristics of the flume. And you made a measurement of what the depth was at the flume. So we do know what that initial depth is or the starting depth. I'm going to call that uh, 0 0.15 um, or 15 centimeters about six inches depth. I don't know exactly what you uh, measured in the laboratory experiment, but we'll call that the initial depth at the downstream end of the channel. And what the program does is it takes the difference between that initial depth and the um, normal depth, 0 0.0189, which I, we calculated, and splits that up into equal increments of changes in the depth. Uh, and that will be the uh, difference in depth that will be imposed between any point 1 and any point 2. We start off at uh, x is equal to 0, and then we're going to move upstream. That difference here is equal to uh, 0.013, as shown here. It was broken up into about 10 uh, increments, and that's the number of uh, rows that we've got here. So you can see here the first depth at point 2, which is downstream, is equal to my initial depth, which was equal to 0.15. So it's 0.15. That's what that number is there. If we, um, let's say, subtract off 0.013, that gives us a depth of 0.137 at point 1. So we're saying that uh, there, we're, what we want to determine is if at point 2 we have a depth of 0.15 and at point 1 we have a point, depth of 0.137, we want to know how far, uh, what the distance is between those points. While the program or the spreadsheet calculates all the geometric properties, the velocity head, and the friction slope for a given depth at point 1 and at point 2, it uh, uses that equation presented in class for calculating the distance between the points, and that's this uh, variable right here. Uh, that uh, dx is calculated using the uh, difference in elevation or difference in depth between two points, the um, difference in velocity head between two points, and then it uh, uses the average friction slope and the channel slope. All those variables appear in the equation that calculates the distance between two points. And all we then do is accumulate. So we say that at uh, point 2, that's x is equal to 0. If we have a difference in x of 3.342, the value at x1, which is upstream, so it's uh, in the negative x direction, is minus 3.3. Or two. That value then is uh, this. The values uh, for y1 now are uh, put over here where point 2 was because now we move upstream to point 1 and we're going to uh, rename point uh, 1. Um, we're going to give it point 2 and then uh, we're going to recalculate a new point 1. So here the depth is 0.137. We subtract off the uh, dy value, which gives me 0.1242, or 0.124, and we calculate, calculate all the geometric properties. Again, calculate friction slope for each point, and uh, of course the values here 
for the new point two should be the same as the values here for the old point one. Okay, those numbers should all be the same because they're using the same equation to calculate them. And that gives us a new um, dx. And this just goes through and continues to do this calculation. And about 34 meters upstream from the downstream end, we would reach the normal depth right here, 0.019. Um, there's only out to three digits. Uh, the actual depth is about 0.0189. Uh, the flume is only about 13 meters long, that is 42 feet. So on this graph, this would be the location, right-hand side would be the location where the H flume is. Uh, the inlet to the channel is about over to here. And uh, the depths here, so at about 13 meters upstream, the depth is about 0.098. So you'll have these uh, individual depth values, 0.15 and so forth, uh, or whatever you measured in the experiment for a given discharge at the H flume. And you'll be able to match these depths uh, that are calculated to the depths that you measured in the H flume, or in the uh, channel. And if you do not get a good match, that is if they're off a bit, you can play around a little bit with the Manning's uh, N. It's going to be somewhat close to this, but the number might be a little bit smaller or a little bit larger than this. And what you can do is you can change that value and just uh, essentially all you'd need to do is to uh, adjust your normal depth. So let's go through that procedure quickly here. So let's say that I find that I really want to increase Manning's end slightly. So I'll put in 0.015 here for the uh, Manning's uh, N. You note then that we get an imbalance here down here. These two numbers here are not equal to each other. That's because my um, normal depth is off. My normal depth actually has to increase. So I'm going to increase it to uh, somewhat. Calculation done very quickly. So let's say that that's my uh, new normal depth. The flow is uh, subcritical. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start off at, uh, again, with whatever you measured in the lab for that particular discharge at the H flume. And we go through the same process as before. Uh, and so the water surface profile changes a bit. Um, at about 13 meters, the depth now would be 0.1. Well, before we got about 0.098. So there is some difference between what we got before and what we get uh, this time, but the differences are fairly small. Um, but modifying this uh, Manning's N is one way in which we can uh, uh, are able to adjust our uh, calculated values so that we get better fit to the observed uh, water depths. So.